Genesis chapter 25. Go with me to Genesis 25. Genesis 25. Reading from verses 23 to 24. Genesis 25. Shall we read one go? No, that was talking about Rebecca. Amen. Shall we read one go? Now, the Bible says when Rebecca had conceived, God spoke to Rebecca. And those are one of the few instances where Jehovah God himself ministers to a woman. Most of the time when God wanted to speak, he sent an angel if it was to a woman. Otherwise, God spoke to the man. Now, God comes and speaks directly to Rebecca and says, two nations are in your womb and they shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger. Now, this was before they were born. Now, I mean, Rebecca is the mother of who? Jacob and Esau. Are you hearing me? So, God says, who was the older one? Esau was the older one. And now, God comes and tells the mom, Esau being the older shall serve the younger. In other words, the younger shall be greater than, than the older. And you see, under normal circumstance, according to the Jewish custom, things don't literally happen like that. Most of the time, the older ones were the ones that received the blessing from the father. And, and so mostly, it was supposed to be that the older one was meant to be greater, bigger than the younger. But now God gives a decree even before these children were born and says that the younger one shall be greater than the older. That point number one that you need to understand is that before you were formed, God knew how great you would be. Now, this way, they were in their mother's womb. They had not even been born. And God already said what they would be. That the younger one shall be greater. And in fact, when you read, you, you go further in, in, in some of the scriptures, God says, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. They were not born. But God started loving one and hating another. That tells you that even before you appeared here, your destiny was already determined. Your future was already determined. That which God wants to do in your life was already determined. The Bible says we serve a God that knows the end from the beginning. Even before the beginning began, he already knew how the beginning will end. Are you hearing me? Yeah, so there is nothing about your life that surprises God. Do you hear me? There is absolutely nothing about your life that surprises the father. There is nothing new about you that he doesn't know. There is some, nothing new that you will do that will shock him. There is absolutely nothing about your life that surprises God. So you need to come to a place of understand that every single thing concerning your destiny, God already knew even before you appeared here. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. He says he knows the end from the beginning. So the challenge you are going through, he knows how it is going to end. He knows when you are going to come out. He knows how things are going to turn out. Every single detail about your life and your future, Jehovah God knows. Tell your neighbor and say he knows. He knows. Tell your neighbor and say he knows. He knows. Are you, um, whatever it is that you are going through, just know he what? He what? Now, give me Malachi chapter 1. Um, from verse 3. Shall we read one go? 
Okay, start from verse 2. No, no, no. He says Jacob was Esau's brother. But God comes and says, Jacob, I love. Esau, I. Esau, I. So I want you to understand in the wisdom of God, we are going somewhere with this story. God loved Jacob. But when we comes to the Ephraim, the father love Esau more than Jacob. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Yeah, and the Bible says the father loved Esau because of the venison. Because Esau was always producing meat, bringing food to the father. Just because of the father. Every time Esau goes out, Esau will bring something to the father. So the father loved Esau and did not really love Jacob but God loved Jacob and really hated Esau. There are two different things. And the reason is this. The Bible says that Esau did not place value on spiritual matters. Let me tell you, if you want to be someone that is loved by God, place value on spiritual matters. Esau did not value spiritual things. That is the reason why God says he hated Esau. Anything spiritual, Esau does not place value on it. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that attracts heaven's attention, draws God to you, is when you are someone that places value on spiritual things. Esau, when, it, when he was hungry, he sold his birthright. Imagine something as spiritual as a birthright. Because of food, he says, ah, what is birthright? And when I'm hungry, he serves his birthright. He sold his birthright just like that. He does not value spiritual things. So God decided to hit him. Because before they were born, God already knew how they were going to become. How his life was going to be and every other thing else concerning his life. So God hated him and loved Esau and loved Jacob. Now, now let, let me just run through a few things with you. Number one, the Bible says there were two children in Rebekah's womb. One, the first one was the eldest Esau. Number two, Esau was handsome. Esau was hairy. He had a lot of hair on his body. He was very handsome. Esau was skillful. He was a skillful hunter. A hunter. So life and Esau was loved by the father. He was loved by the father. He was handsome. He was skillful. He had a profession. He had a job. But now there was this guy called Jacob. He was a mommy's boy. He was the youngest. He was not handsome. He had no profession. He was only living in tents. So, if you look at these two people on the physical level, everything was working for Esau. Everybody loved Esau. He was the one with the job. He was the one everything was going for. And everybody did not look at Jacob apart from the mother. Why? Because the mother received the word before they were born. Even, oh my God, I feel like preaching this. Even Preach, though sir. Jacob's life did not amount to anything. Even though there was nothing up about Jacob's life, the mother still loved him. Why? Because he knew Jacob carried a prophecy. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what, who looks ahead of you. It doesn't matter who has what you do not have. As long as you carry a prophetic word, uh, hey, it doesn't matter who uh, has gone ahead. The other day, God said, the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. It may look like they have what you don't have. It may look like they have gone ahead of you, but God is about to turn the tables around. Yeah. God is about to lift you to the place where no one thought you could get to if you are here shout i receive it i receive it shout i receive it i receive it life can place you at the bottom but god can bring you from the bottom to the top can i tell you something life can place you at a place where you people teach you when to wake up they tell you when to sleep 
what to eat. They literally control your life because you are at the backside of life. But God is about to turn the tables around. RC. I said, God is about to turn the tables around. RC. You may have what they don't have, but as you may not have what they have, but as long as you carry a prophetic word right. and you can hold on to that prophecy, mm. a time will come that you shall be the head. RC. The Lord shall lift you and exalt your horn RC. above every one of them. Yeah. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Receive your that. classmates and your colleagues may look ahead. They may be money than you. They may have connections more than you. They may have better jobs more than you. All you have is like Jacob, a word. And I pray for you in the name yeah. of Jesus. Regardless of what you don't have, yes. may your word speak for you. RC. May your word speak for you. RC. May your word speak for you. RC. If you are here, shout, I receive receive it. receive it. Can I get like four people here just want to illustrate something? Four, four, just four people. Make a queue. Four, quickly, quickly, please. Four, make a queue, a queue. Yes. Yes, thank you. Do you understand a queue? A queue, 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 queue. Yes. Now, now, James, move. When, when he moves, every one of you follow him slowly. Now, if he is the head, and he determines our direction. He goes right, we move right. He goes left, we move left. And sometimes that is what life pleases some of you. Now, there are people that literally determine your life. There are people that determine whether you are supposed to wake up or sleep. They make a call and you are following like a mumu. Why? Because if you don't follow, you may not eat. If you don't follow, something may go wrong against you. And it, it looks like they are ahead of you. Pause it there. Pause it there. Pause it there. Fo just fo follow the queue. It looks like they are ahead of you. They determine where you go. They determine where you sleep. They determine everything about you. And life has placed you at the back. Mm. Nothing seems to be working for you. Now, everybody turn. God can turn the tables. Yes. And the same guy that looked like I was at the back. Uh, I was not recognized. Yes. I was not looked at. God can make me the head. Yes. I prophesy over your life. RC. Maybe you are like Jacob. Destiny has put you at the back. Yes. But may God lift you to the top. RC. May the prophetic word you carry yes. manifest and bring you to the top. RC. People may not recognize you. Yes. People may not pay attention to you. Yes. But I lift a prayer over uh, your head. In the mighty name of Jesus. RC. May God lift you up from the merry clay and set your feet upon the rock to stay. RC. May the same God that lifted J Jacob out of the tent and made him a nation. Yes. May God lift you up. RC. The same God that lifted Joseph from the dungeon yes. and made him a prime minister. Yes. May God lift you up. RC. The same God that lifted David from the wilderness and made him a kid. Yes. May the Lord lift you up. RC. I prophesy over yes. your life. Yes. Everything that has not been working, yes. I decree and declare. Yes. May God make it begin to work. RC. May things be aligned in your favor. RC. May things be aligned in your favor. RC. Every labor you have been laboring yes. that has been yielding no resource yes. in the name of Jesus RC. from today yes. let your labor your resource RC. let your labor your resource RC. let your effort your resource RC. let your effort your resource RC. if you are here shout I receive it. I receive it sit down for a minute sit down gentlemen Jacob was at the backside of life nothing seemed to be working for him but when God turned the tables yes. life presented Jacob with disadvantages no job second born nothing but one secret of Jacob is that Jacob lived in tents mm. now in the olden days tents signified like the church Jacob was at a place of worship Jacob was always at the place uh. of prayer mm. 
Jacob was always connected to God. In as much as he had nothing to show for, he was always living in tents. Ladies and gentlemen, you can show me a man that has everything and show me another man that has prayer, that knows how to pursue after God. Even though the second man may not have anything, but in the process of time, he shall be the head. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm yes, saying? Sir. I've seen men who were billionaires who have become paupers and died poor. And I've seen men who were poor that has risen up into becoming billionaires. It doesn't matter what somebody does not have. As long as the person can connect to God yes. and connect to the tent, yes. they shall get ahead of those that looks like they have gone ahead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today my message for you is simple. It doesn't matter who looks like they have gone ahead. Ah. It doesn't matter who looks like they have what. You are like Jacob. All you have is a tent uh. and your place of worship i hear god say uh, he's about to turn your story I'll around he will use that you see when jacob was in the tent people were mocking him sometimes when you are going to the house of god people mock you when you are getting to the place of prayer people are mocking why are you going for kesha uh, what is wrong with you ladies and gentlemen a time is about to come yes, that same people shall come to you for a miracle ah. that same people shall look for you and tell you can you help me the god you serve in this house yes is about to turn your story around I'll see. if you are here shout i receive it i receive it you see when when Elijah, the major prophet, in First Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 42 downwards, went to the Mount Camel to pray. The Bible says that he sent a message to, 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 to Ahab, the king. He told his servant, go and tell Ahab to go up and eat and drink. For I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Ahab was the king. He says, I tell Ahab to sit on his chariot and prepare to go to Jezreel. Mm. For I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Yes. Now, Ahab was a king, but the prophet went to the top of Camel. Even though he heard the sound of abundance of rain, he yes. went to the prayer mountain to pray. When others were eating and drinking at the bottom of the mountain, the prophet was in a place of prayer. Ahab was the one with the chariot. The prophet didn't have a chariot. Ahab was the king. If he wanted to eat anything, he could have gotten. The prophet did not have that. But guess what? When the prophet went to the place of prayer, and he began to pray. Now, uh, can, I, can, I, can I get... Um, 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 come, be, yes, come here. L let me illustrate the second thing. Now, shall we read First Kings chapter 18? Shall we read one go? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Take me back a bit. Take me back to verse 43. Uh -huh. Read one go. Ahab did what? Ladies and gentlemen, Ahab was the king. When other people are eating and drinking, don't eat and drink. Did you hear what I said? When Ahabs are eating and drinking, if it, you have to fast for seven days, do it. Because you don't compare yourself to an Ahab who has got everything at his disposal. Ahab had limitless resources. It didn't matter how difficult the economy became. Ahab was going to be okay. So when Ahabs are eating and drinking, ladies and gentlemen, come to the place of prayer. Elijah, and the Bible says, and so Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went where? To the top of Camel. When Ahabs are eating and drinking, come to Kesha. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. When people are enjoying their lives, get to your place of prayer. Yeah. Why? Because the Bible says, though, because we compare ourselves with, uh, um, with others, we are not wise. They may be doing things, they may be doing great things, they may be having all the resources, they may be having all the money. But, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest place you can be and the greatest place you can compete with the people who are the hubs is the mountaintop. Is the place of prayer. The mountain top signifies the place of prayer. When others are achieving great things and looks that like you don't have much, get to the place of prayer. Be like Jacob. Esau had everything for working for him. Jacob was dwelling in tents at the place of worship, at the place of prayer. 
So Elijah went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of the camel and bowed his face between his knee, between in between his knees, and he began to travel. Uh -huh. Next verse, verse 44. And verse 43. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. Read one go. Uh -huh. There is what? When Elijah sent his servant to go and check whether the rains were coming. Remember the prophet had declared that there was going to be rain. He said, I hear a sound of abundance of what? Of rain. When he sent his servant to go and check whether the rains were coming, he says there is what? Nothing. When you initially get to your place of closer of prayer, yes. people will mock you. Why? Because when you begin to pray, you begin to get into spiritual things, you will see nothing. Elijah, the major prophet, saw nothing. He was at the mountain to pray for rain, but he saw what? But that was just the initial stages. Every single one of us will go through that point where you are in. You are working hard, but you are seeing oh my god i wish i came to church are you getting what i'm saying you are praying so well kind of fasting but you are seeing nothing yeah. it looks like you are praying for the job situation to change but you are seeing nothing. you are praying that you get a husband but you are seeing nothing. you are praying that the international door will go you go to the embassy and then they will refuse you you are seeing nothing, nothing. but can i tell you something when you see nothing at the initial stages don't stop Tell your neighbor, don't stop. Don't stop. So Elijah kept pushing, and he kept pushing, and he says, and seven, and seven times he said, go again. So he prayed the first time, nothing happened. Second time, nothing happened. Third time, nothing happened. Seven times he was seeing nothing. If it was you, you would have given up right at the third time. Uh, I don't think anything will happen. Uh, I think I need to change. I need to move church. Uh, I need to go go to. They, they said there's a place in Kitui. It is hot, hot. Miracle will happen. Hey! Elijah sent his servant seven times. And he was seeing. And this is a major prophet who had heard God himself. And he was seeing nothing. nothing. At the seventh time, something happened. And it came to pass at the seventh time, Kaduzabaya, there is, he said there is a little cloud, as small as a man's hand, rising out of the sea. So he said, go up and say to up, prepare your chariots and go down. Can I tell you something? Yes, sir. At the, the, your seventh time is about to come. I receive some of you you have been seeing nothing happening yes but your seventh time yes. is about to manifest you are about to see a testimony yes you are about to experience a mega breakthrough yes that thing you have been praying for yes i declare is about to be released i, Re the, I declare a release 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 a release, a release. A release. A release. so he said tell up to prepare his chariot and go before the rain stops you. Now, shall we read one go? Now it's a half. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Ahab did what? Now, Ahab, now start riding. Ahab was slowly, Ahab was going to Jezreel on his chariot. Where was Elijah when Ahab started moving? Where was Elijah at the, where, when, when Ahab started moving? Elijah was still at the prayer meeting. Praying! But Ahab had started the journey. Before when Elijah was praying, what was Ahab doing? He was eating. He was enjoying life. People, when you are praying and coming to Kesha and people are enjoying life, doing things ladies and gentlemen, don't feel like you are behind, don't feel like you are wasting your time, it may look like nothing is happening, yes. but I tell you everything is working in the spirit yes. Ahab was at the top of the mountain eating Elijah was at the top of the mountain praying, when the rain started coming, guess what, Ahab had a chariot Elijah had nothing he started moving. So the Bible says, So I have rode away and went to Jezreel. Uh huh. Next verse, put it on the screen, please. Uh huh. 
Now the Bible said the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins. Now, where was Elijah? Now, where was Elijah? Where was Elijah? Elijah was at the top of the mountain and the Bible said the hand of the Lord came upon him and gathered up his loins and he began to run. Ahab is running. Ahab, just keep running. And Ahab is running. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And Elijah outran Ahab. To the entrance of Jezreel. Can I tell you something? It doesn't matter who has gone ahead. Yes. As long as you can stay in your closet of prayer. Yes. They may be enjoying life you don't have. They may be driving big cars you don't have. Yes. They may be having better jobs you don't have. Yes. But stay like Elijah uh -huh. in your closet of prayer. Yes. After you come out of your closet of prayer, yeah. it doesn't matter the acts that have gone ahead. You shall overcome or, 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 or overtake them. Yes. Oh my God. Did you hear what I said? Yes. You are about to overtake your Ahab. I said, any Ahab that has ever threatened you, yes, you are about to overtake that Ahab. I receive any Ahab that looks like they have gone ahead of you, yes, you are about to overtake that Ahab. I receive if you are here, shout, I receive, I receive it. You are going to overtake that. Ahab. I receive. Imagine a man coming from a prayer meeting, overtaking another that was at the bottom of the mountain. That's why I'm telling you. If you give me two men, one that has prayer, but has nothing, but one that has everything, but does not have prayer. The one that has prayer with nothing, in the process of time, yes. shall overtake the one that has everything. Amen. I've seen it happening over and over and over again. Thank you. Ahab was still riding the chariot. Bless you. Are you getting me? Yes. yes. So, Jacob was just found in tents. But one thing that still beats my understanding when we go to heaven, I'm going to ask God, is about the fact that when I was meditating on this story, how God says that the younger shall become greater than the but the younger was too much of a crook. Did you hear what I said? When it was time, Genesis chapter 27, for God to bless one of them. Please, give me Genesis 27. So it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, that he called Esau his older son, and said to him, my son. And he said, and said, here am I. And he said, Behold, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, please take your weapons and your weaver and your bow and go to the field and hunt game for me. And make savory food such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. And Rebecca was listening when Isaac spoke um, to Esau. Uh -huh. Shall we all read from there? One go. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now hold on there. The son was afraid to go for the blessing. But the mother was determined to do everything possible for the son to get a blessing. Why? Because he had what? The mother had what? A prophet. He had what? A, a word. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter how hard life gets. Hold on to the word. 
everything looked like Esau was going to get the blessing the mother was working everything overworking to make sure Jacob gets the one now skip to verse uh, so, so what the mother did skip to verse um, 18 the mother killed the lamb and made food for Esau and made food for Jacob for, and told Jacob to present the food to the father but now guess what what brought the blessing to Jacob was two things. Number one, the lamb. Blood was shed. And by the reason of the blood, we possess everything. Amen. Without the blood that was shed, there was no way Jacob would have been able to receive the blessing. But because blood was shed, the blood now signifies the blood of the lamb. Oh, are you here? Yes, sir. The blood that was shed, that was killed, the lamb that was killed for Jacob to take to the father represented the blood of Christ. And what we don't automatically receive by our efforts, by grace and by the reason of the blood, we get. Yes. What under normal circumstances was not meant to come to you, by the reason of the blood, it yes. makes it possible. I, I don't know what you what has what has disqualified you for your blessing. Yes. yes. Today, by the reason of the blood, yes. even what you do not qualify for, yes. I declare it shall come to you. RC. I said it shall come to you. RC. When you are here, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Shout by the reason of the blood. By the reason of the blood. I take my possession. 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 And he puts the skin, number two, he put the skin of the lamb on his body. So when he presented the food, in Genesis chapter 18 um, 27 verses about 20 above the father said ah, the voice is the voice of Jacob but the hands are the hands of the one that qualifies for the blessing now let's go to verse, verse 19 shall we read one go uh huh now, who says what? Read it again. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, who has the prophecy? Who has the prophecy? No, who has the prophecy? Jacob. Now, he has a prophecy and he needs to get a blessing. But the approach. To getting the blessing is so questionable. Mm -hmm. No, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, yes sir. And I still, that's what I'm saying. When we go to heaven, I'll ask God. Because it does not make sense for all this. He said, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. Number one, he's not Esau. Number two, he's not the firstborn. I have done what you told me. Third lie. He has not been told to do anything. Arise, eat of my of my game, and let your soul bless me. Number four, the game was not his. Fourth lie. It was his own father's game. His own father's sheep that was killed for him. Number four, let's, let's verse quickly. Isaac said to him, how did... Read, read, read. One go. Uh -huh. now that is the biggest lie he said because the Lord your God brought it to me he is lying in the name of God it's like some of you Papa I was at church I was praying and they were sleeping see as long as you carry a word yes this is one thing i'm going to show you sometimes even your own mistakes cannot refute the word amen your own errors cannot nullify the word of god concerning your life yes did you hear what i said this should disqualify jacob from getting anything from jehovah by his own shortcomings 
could not stop the word. The Bible says God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise yes. and the weak things of the world to confound the mighty and the base things of the world and the things which has been despised. Can I pray for you? Yes, yes. sir. What people thought you would never get. Yes. Because of the way they see you, yes. Yes. they should get ready for a shock. Yes. Regardless of the way they see you, heaven shall still make it possible I, I said heaven shall still make it possible I heaven shall still make it possible I if you are here shout i receive it i receive it he said he chooses the foolish shall we read one go first Corinthians 1 27 one go but god has chosen the foolish things of the world uh-huh mm-hmm Next verse, verse 28. And the base things of the world and the things which has been despised has God what? If people despise you, get ready. May you become the chosen of Jehovah. I, I said, when people despise you, I said, may you become the chosen of Jehovah. I receive. If you are here, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Shout, I receive it. I receive it. Then let's go back to the scripture, Genesis 27. And then let me let me try and round up so that we can pray. Uh -huh. He said, "The Lord your God brought it to me." Verse twenty, quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh -huh. Next, verse twenty-one. And Isaac said, "Please, shall we read one go? Shall we read one go?" Uh huh. Uh huh. He says the voice is Jacob's voice. So Jacob's voice means this is Jacob. You don't deserve it. But the hands are the hands of the one that deserves the blessing. Who was the blessing supposed to be given to? Esau. Why is Jacob now getting the blessing? Because he had put the skin of the lamb over his body. He had put a covering. In other words, because of the covering, even though you don't deserve the blessing, you are receiving the blessing. I receive. There are certain blessings you don't even deserve. But because of a covering you are under. You qualify for things you do not qualify I for. Receive. I receive. By the altar of grace. Yes. Do you remember the lady's testimony? Eh? The, the, the lawyer said, which altar is that? What's your name, ma'am? Jane. Jane said, Jane, the lawyer says, which altar is that? By this altar, what you don't qualify for. Yes. He said the judge had already written the, what she wanted to rule against them. But by the prayer at the altar, the judgment was overturned. I lift the prayer over you. Yes. What you do not qualify for. Yes. May Jehovah grant it unto you. I receive. By the reason of this altar. Yes. May God grant it unto you. I receive. If you are here, shout I receive. It. I receive. It. Shout I receive. I receive it. Uh -huh. Jacob, even though he didn't deserve the blessing, received it because number one, he carried the word. Number two, there was a blood that spoke for him. Number three, he had a covering. So, if you have a word and you are connected to the blood, number three, and you have a covering, there is, doesn't matter your frailties. What God has ordained for you shall come to you. The father nearly gave the blessing to Esau. If not for the intervention of the mother, there is some of you. There's a position that is meant for you. Yes. A job that is meant for you. Yes. That is about to go to another. But we pray, may God release a Rebecca. Yes. Oh my God. I said, may God release your Rebecca. I see. Do you know Rebecca's? Rebecca's are daring people. They don't care what it takes to make sure you get to where God has ordained you to get to. They will do it anyway. Do you know when Jacob said, my father will curse me. Do you know why Rebecca said, let the curse come upon me. Yeah. In other words, they are ready to do anything to make sure you get what God has ordained you to get. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. release my Rebecca. Release my Rebecca. You need one Rebecca that will say, let the curse come upon me. I am pushing you forward. It doesn't matter what goes wrong. It is on me. Yes. Oh my God. 
may God give us Rebecca's. I, I said, may God give us Rebecca's. They don't care the consequences. They are ready. They don't care about them. All they want is to see you win. Oh, Allah, they don't care about what goes on. All they want is to see you go ahead. All they want is to see you become that which God has created you to be. All they want is to see you move forward and advance. But his mother said to him, let the case be upon me, my son. Only obey my voice and go and get them for me. Mm. The mother was ready to take a case for the son. May God give you somebody that will be selfless enough I receive. to push your dreams forward. I receive. If you are here, shout, I receive. I receive. I said, shout, I receive. I receive. I said, shout, I receive. I receive. People that are ready to see you win, it doesn't matter the expense, the cost. They don't care. All they want to see is to see you get to the top. People who are ready to take sacrifices for you. These days, hey, every, they say everybody for himself, God for us all. Nobody wants to see you. Everybody wants to push themselves and push their own agenda. But I pray that may God bring you Rebecca's. I, I said, may God bring you Rebecca's. I, I said, may God bring you Rebecca's. I, I said, may God bring you Rebecca's. I receive. People that when you are even wrong, they put, they pick, they take the wrong, they take the offense upon themselves. Now let me try and round up and then we can go. We can pray. So after Jacob, even though he received the blessing, now remember when you receive, when you get into the place of prayer, don't forget, everything begins with nothing. Somebody say nothing. nothing. You are praying, but you are seeing what? Nothing. Later you begin to see the blessing and after you begin to see the blessing you are making mistakes but still the blessing are still coming now you get to the place of trying somebody say trying try. where God now begins to try you where now you are praying you have matured in the kingdom but now you are working hard but it looks like nothing is coming through when Jacob took the blessing and went to his uncle Laban he was asked to work for 7 years for a wife he worked for how long? How many years? 14 years for one wife and if Jacob oh my god I feel like preaching this if Jacob was some, or like some of you didn't want you say I don't think that I even this blessing that my father spoke over me is it really working if it was working why am I working so hard for 14 years for one woman no, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. yes. It is very easy for Jacob to refute the blessing that was spoken over him because now he is working and it looks like his work is not yielding results. He was he was working for something and it looks like nothing was coming out of his labor. Uh. Forty years. It is very easy for you to begin to. Why am I even going to pray? Because when I pray, nothing happens. But there was a time you prayed little and blessings were coming. That time it was God. Now that you are praying, it looks like nothing is happening. My village people. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So, after you, sometimes God makes you go through the place of trying. When you are praying, you are working hard, but nothing seems to work. Everything goes quiet. God takes you through what we call the silent years. Somebody say silent years. And in your silent years, God teaches you lessons. In your silent years, you develop capacity. In your silent years, you position yourself for a mega breakthrough. In your silent years, you are working hard, praying hard, but nothing seems to be working. Is there somebody who is connecting to what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. You started uh, by praying, seeing nothing. Miracles started happening. Your life started taking shape. You received the mega blessing. You received the prophecy. Everything looked okay. All of a sudden, everything goes quiet. Silent years. And when you are in your silent years and you don't manage yourself well, that is where the devil will sell you a lie. The devil will tell you your prayers are not working. The devil will tell you you don't need to go to church any longer. The devil will tell you there is a witch doctor in, in Arusha that can help you run to the witch doctor. In your silent years, the enemy speaks louder than the voice of God. Because in your silent years, God doesn't speak. It's the devil that speaks. Oh my God. I feel like pre are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, in your silent years, you don't hear God. You hear the devil's voice. In your silent years, you don't hear God. You hear the voice of your flesh. Because everything is not and everything is failing in your face yes in your silent years everything goes quiet and that is the time you don't have to allow the voice of your flesh and the voice of the devil to detect how your life becomes mm. 
in your silent years Jacob worked hard and when he was given a wife the first wife was given was Leah and the first son was Leah was Judah and Judah signifies praise God was telling Jacob even in the midst of the hardship praise me and as you praise me you shall get your miracle Amen. when God is not speaking and everything goes quiet and you are in your silent years learn to praise God Amen. give him what we call the sacrifice of praise Amen. be upstanding I will continue the sermon because it's too deep if I continue on some of the things I'm, 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 I have to say and, and the hour it may not be conducive because some of you the demons in your village have started working against you. Somebody say, in my silent years. In my silent years. Remember, in your silent years, who speaks louder? The devil speaks louder than God. When things are not working in your life, it's the devil that speaks louder. In your si- and that is where, if you are not careful, you get deceived. You even lose hope in God. You lose hope in church. In your silent years, Everybody becomes a witch. Everybody around you become a suspect. No, are you getting what I'm saying? Everybody, you dream, you see your auntie, you even see your mother. Is it my mother? In your silence, yes, everybody becomes a suspect. No, have you been there? When nothing seems to be working and you are even suspecting the people you don't even need to suspect. You had a dream your pastor was laying hands on you. It looks like your pastor was knocking your head. Hey, even pastor. <laughs> even the man of God is like, in your silence. Yes. You see, if you are not careful, you get what we call deception. Somebody say deception. deception. You get deceived. The devil sells you an idea that leads you into destruction. But I pray that may grace find you. I receive. I said may grace find you. I receive grace. Even in your silent years. Yes. If you are here, shout I receive. I receive. Are you ready to pray? Yes. I said, are you ready to pray? Yes. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to pray like your voice is yours. Amen. See, it's raining. When it's raining and you sleep, you know the sleep is very sweet when you when it's yeah. If we forfeited our sleep to come here let us engage in prayer amen yes sir. are we together yes sir. yes we've got a few hours to go so let us what engage in prayer, prayer. shout in the name of jesus in the name of jesus shout it in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i decree and declare i decree and declare shout in i decree and declare i decree and declare by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost every prophetic word every prophetic word declared over my life declared over my life shall come to pass shall come to pass i decree and declare i decree and declare no weakness no weakness no weakness no weakness, no weakness in my life in my life shall stop shall stop the mind of god the mind of god concerning me concerning me i decree and declare i decree and declare no plot of the enemy no plot of the enemy in my life in my life shall stop shall stop the purpose of god concerning me the of god concerning me as i begin to pray as i begin to pray i decree and declare i decree and declare let the counsel of god let the counsel of god concerning my life Concerning my life, be released. Be released. Be released. Be released. I walk. I walk in my prophetic destiny. In my prophetic destiny. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Like Jacob. Like Jacob. My steps are ordered. My steps are ordered to fulfill my prophetic to destiny. Fulfill my prophetic destiny. As I lift up my voice in As prayer. As I lift up my voice in I prayer. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Every prophetic word. Every prophetic word concerning my destiny. Concerning my destiny is coming to. Is coming to come on, lift up your voice. Lava Gada Bashada Banashada Rabababala Brashada Banashada 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 Rapa Palia Scada Padua Shada Labranca Rapa Palabra Scada Bacana Labranca Rapa Palabra Shada Labranca Rapa Palabra Scada 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 Labranca Rapa Pal
Some of you know that even though right now you are broke, nothing is happening. You know that there is someday you, you become great. You, you feel some greatness within you even though around you there is nothing that is speaking that greatness. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the father of lies in whom there is no darkness at all. Every passion and every now give me this scripture. He's um, that, that is in Philippians. He says it is him that works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. I was meditating on that scripture interestingly today, and it was it came out so that um, it is him. Philippians 2, verses 13. Now read one go for it is. Now, I want you to understand something here. I'm going to explain this. I was supposed to connect this to the scripture, but I, I didn't get the time. So, read it. One go. For it is God. Uh huh. Uh huh. It is who? It is who? Who works in you? He says, It is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. There is a desire in you, it is from Jehovah. Amen. And that desire is a desire for greatness. Amen. And that desire, it is God that put there because He knows you can become it. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. yes sir. With around you, there is nothing that is speaking greatness, but there is a desire of greatness inside you. Amen. And I came to declare it shall manifest. I don't see. You see yourself owning a fleet of cars, it shall manifest. I you see. see yourself having your masters abroad, it shall manifest. I I you see. see yourself becoming a great man, it shall manifest. I you see. see yourself owning a whole estate, it shall manifest. I I see. See. When you read this, give me this scripture in Passion Translation. It is so interesting. Give me the in Passion Translation. In Passion Translation. One go. In Passion. Yes. He says, God will continually revitalize you. Read it, read it, read it. One go. Implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Hey. Who put in the passion? God. No, no, no. You have a passion for anything at all. Yeah. You have a passion for a good marriage. Yes. It is God that put in that passion. Amen. He says it is God will say God will continually revitalize you, implanting within you the passion. That passion, it was God that put in you. Amen. And I declare it shall manifest. manifest. I said it shall manifest. manifest. Now, this is the prayer you are praying. Yes. If you don't have passion for anything at all, maybe this prayer is not for you. But if there is a desire within your spirit, something you are believing God for, yes. you are praying, you, are, you first need to understand that who put it there? God put that passion within you. And you are praying for that to manifest. Amen. That dream house, that dream life, whatever it is, you are pushing it into fulfillment today. Come on, lift up your voice. May you manifest that passion. 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 Let's 
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, release my Rebecca. Lord, release my Rebecca. Shout, Lord. Lord, release my helpers. Release my helpers. See, Rebecca is not just a helper. A helper that is ready to risk their life for you. And those helpers don't come by chance. Helpers that are ready to risk their life. Oh my God. It is possible. Don't you think it is possible? It is. It is possible. People, have you received help from someone? You begin to even wonder, this help is too weird. Have you gotten that before? It is possible. Maybe you have not. Me, I've seen that before. Strange help that you even begin to wonder, what is this? May God send you people that will be ready to risk their life for you. I receive. All they want to see is to see you win. Yes. Like the other day, what I was saying, that God give you genuine midwives. Amen. Like in Exodus chapter 1, the Bible said that the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives and said that when you see the Hebrew women delivering, at the time of birth and you see that the baby is a boy, kill the baby. But the Hebrew midwives said, no, we were not meant for that. Now, give me, give me, give me from verse 12. Give me from verse 12 first. Let's take from verse 12. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Next week, that's what I'm going to talk. I mean, I mean, not next week, the week after, that's what I'm going to talk about. The more they afflict you, the more you shall multiply. Amen. No, you didn't hear that. 
The more the enemies will afflict you, the more you multiply. Amen. Shout, I receive that. I, I receive, receive that. The more they torment you, the more you shall multiply. I receive. The more they will afflict you, the more you shall multiply. I receive. So they resorted to now wanting to kill them physically. Because now they were trying everything. It was not working. So skip to verse 15. Uh-huh. Any midwife that has been sent to you, yes, that is coming like a midwife are supposed to help you deliver, isn't it? Yes. But they are sent to kill your baby. Yes. We declare that the judgment of God come upon them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Did you hear what I said? Yes. They are coming like helpers, but they are demons, devils. They are coming like helpers, but the assignment is to kill your destiny. But we decree and declare yes. any midwife around you yes. whose assignment is to kill your dream, yes. let the judgment of God come upon them. 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 In the name of Jesus. You see, let me tell you when a midwife is helping you and they are the ones sent to kill you or kill your dream, you will never know because or you'll be blinded by the help they are offering. So, but you don't know they are the ones that have been sent to kill your dream. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But may judgment of Jehovah intervene. Amen. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any midwife. Any midwife. Assigned to kill my dream. Assigned to kill my dream. Assigned to kill my prophetic destiny. Assigned to kill my prophetic destiny. As I clap and pray. As I clap and pray. I release fire. I release fire. To destroy the awash. Come on, release fire. 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 Shalala <laughs> Shalala, 
Against me, against against me. Against by the power of the Holy Ghost. By, by the, the power of the Holy Ghost, I decree and declare. I decree and declare. They are removed. They I are removed. removed. We get three more prayer points and then we are out of here. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. My Rebecca's are coming. My Rebecca's are coming. My helpers are coming. My helpers are coming. Shout, I release. I release. My positive advertisers. My positive advertisers. There are people that God will send to advertise you positively. Yes. They will speak well about you too well yes. that people will just desire to know you. Amen. Somebody say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Release my positive advertisers. Release my positive advertisers. At meetings when you are not there, they will mention your name. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Well, they will mention your name. This thing must go to David. They, they will mention your name. Amen. May God release your positive advertisers. I, I receive. See. These days, people are just advertising people negatively. But you are praying, Father, release my positive advertisers. Men that will mention my name at, at yes, the right Lord. meetings. Yes, Lord. At the right meetings. Yes. yes Lord. See, there are people, they speak well in your face, behind your back. They speak evil. Evil. Somebody say evil. 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 But you are lifting up your voice. Father, release my positive advertisers. Release. I told you the first time I went to Cameroon. A pastor called me and said, man of God, there is a son of yours here that is speaking so well about you. The son says, you pray, you are prophet, you pray, cripples, you walk blind, see, you have even raised the dead. I have said, hey, the way the guy was lifting my CV, the guy, my son there spoke so well about me to an extent that the man of God desired to invite me. He said, we want you to come and release that grace upon us. May God release someone that will speak well over, over you. Yes. You are not there, but they are speaking too well of you. You are not there, but they are fighting for a job for you. I they are see. fighting for businesses for you. I they are see. fighting for positions for you. I they are see. fighting for you. I and such men are hard to come by. But if God give you even two or three, you are good to go. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name Father, of Jesus. release my positive advertisers. Yes. Father, release my positive advertisers. Yes. Come on, lift up your voice. Yes. Pray yes. that God will release your positive yes. advertisers. Yes. Men and women that will speak well for you. That will speak well for you. That will speak well for you. Let Baba Kadosha Nagaya. Rada Dada Bakoda Basodaya. Hey, Allah, bless the Bada Dada Soka. Rabba, 
I decree and declare. I decree and declare. Every negative advertiser. Every negative advertiser. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shout every negative advertiser. Every negative advertiser. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shout in the name of Jesus. In the name, name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. In this month of April. In this month of April. Uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. Uncommon testimonies. Uncommon testimonies. As I lift up my voice. As I lift up my voice. In prayer. In prayer. I activate. I activate. Uncommon testimonies. Uncommon testimonies. Come on, lift up your voice. Shall we read one go? Says who? Uh huh. God says, For I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. Thoughts and plans for your welfare, for your safety, for your good life. That is that the word welfare means. To give you hope in your final outcome. Tell your neighbor, my final outcome shall be great. My final outcome shall be. You no, know, it doesn't look like it, but it shall be great. Yes. It shall be great. I receive. Shout it! It shall be great. It shall be great. Shout it! It shall be great. It shall be great. Shout it! My final outcome shall be glorious. My final outcome shall be glorious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My final outcome shall be glorious. My final outcome shall be glorious. Shout it! My final outcome shall be glorious. My final outcome shall be glorious. Shout it! My final outcome shall be glorious. My final outcome shall be glorious. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give me a new living trust. Translation. 
Read one go. For I know the plans I have for you, uh -huh. says the Lord. Uh -huh. And the plans of you will not call you just one. To give you a future and a hope. To give you what? A future and a hope. And who is speaking here? God says he has plans for you. Amen. It doesn't matter who does not have, even maybe you don't have plans for yourself, but Jehovah says he has plans for you. Yes. I said Jehovah says he has what? Plans for you. Your future is glorious. I receive. I said your future is glorious. I receive. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Everybody be upstanding. 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 Rapa, <laughs> 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 